This video is an offshoot of a video I did recently on how oak bark is this great fuel with unique properties. I had shot some of this stuff to tag onto the end of that video, but it was just getting kind of long and I thought this would make its own good standalone video anyway because there's some stuff in here that uh, very few people probably know. Now I'm not really the person to show you how to do this you know, well or right. Uh, I just wanted to show proof of concept that it can be done. Most people would never you know, think that you could do this. Where I learned this from is California Indians and that's because I live here and I study you know, anything I can about how to live here on land from the ground up. I'm sure that other cultures around the world have practiced this as well, uh, but you know that's where I learned it. So shout out to any California natives out there watching and anyone else who lives here who has taken the time to try to learn the secrets of uh, the land and maybe be of this place instead of just in it. Let's roll. All right, this is a native grass here in California called Carinatus. It's a semi-perennial, so it grows for, I think it's a short-lived perennial. Maybe it grows for two years, maybe it's biennial, I don't really know. But uh, it's not as long-lived as some of the, our native grasses. A lot of the California native grasses are very long-lived clumping grasses. They form a mound of leaves and they just grow every year. So this has pretty large seeds. This we're going to gather today to experiment with toasting. They're not, you know, the size of a wheat kernel or anything. In fact, they're a lot smaller, but they're, they're substantial, you know, they're not, they're not tiny. They are ripe right now. This is the perfect time to gather this. Now, traditionally, they were gathered with a seed beater, which is this thing. This is a very crude one that I made. Some of them are pretty crude, usually not quite this crude, uh, and some of them are really nice. It just depends on the culture. But these are widely used across California, and they're used in conjunction with another part, which is a large wide mouth basket. So a really big basket, often cone shaped, but it has a pretty big mouth. So you can hold the basket right next to the head of seeds and watch this. I'm gonna whack this. Oh wait, I wanna show you something else first. You see that dark seed right there? That's called ergot fungus. This is an extremely poisonous and extremely dangerous plant toxin. It's a fungus that takes over the seed and that's the actual seed where the normal seed is, you know, maybe like a tenth this size or an eighth this size. This one's super huge because it has this black fungus colonizing it. So this used to poison uh, apparently entire villages in Europe and they called it St. Anthony's Fire. It also contains LSD. So I believe this is where LSD was originally synthesized from. So you get to die an agonizing death and have a bad trip at the same time. Very, very dangerous. It doesn't grow on all grains. Here it grows mostly on the wild rye, but it also grows on the carinatus. I don't think I've ever seen it on wild oats, so do not eat this. So watch this, see how, see how heavy this is with seeds? It's like bending over here, watch this. Okay, so that's most of the seeds, uh, pretty much all the seeds in the upper area. I missed some down here. Maybe I missed like 10 seeds or 15. Done. So this is a technology that developed in an area that has a lot of edible seeds. And grass seeds and other like flower seeds and stuff were very, very important foods in California. Along with acorns, note that most of these are starches and a bunch of them are grains. Uh, this is the native diet in California. Uh, this is another one right here. It's called wild blue rye. This also frequently gets ergot fungus, very frequently. In fact, I'll go find one right now and show it to you. So the wild blue rye ripens later. This one is close to ripe here, but yeah, a few of the seeds are coming out. The cool thing about the wild blue rye, uh, this one stays in the heads really well. So you can come along, you know, much later and harvest it and it'll, it doesn't just fall out real easy. The worst for just falling out is this one, which is the wild oats. This was introduced. This one, you know, it'll ripen and the seeds just keep falling out as they ripen. There's an ergot fungus right there growing out of that one. And sometimes these will have multiple infected with like three or four of these uh, fungus things sticking out of the head there.
Okay, so I was able to actually overcook some of the seeds. Some of them are too dark to eat. Other ones seem to be more about what you'd want in order to process them just to get the hulls off so you could, you know, process them further because a lot of what's on here is this like tough, high silica, you know, hard fiber hull. But as you can see, it just rubbed off because now it's all toasted. But some of them are overcooked and I imagine some of them are undercooked. So, you know, that's just because I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm not some badass Indian lady that grew up watching her family do this and then did it for years and years and basically mastered all this stuff. So for the same reason, I have one small scorch mark on the basket, but my main point here is that that's it. That's, that's the only problem. And all that cooking, I was able to literally burn some of these with these hot coals and I have one little scorch mark because I just, you know, I'm not in the habit of just keeping this thing moving. And you will see these scorch marks on old uh, baskets. I've seen them before. Pretty neat though, right? I mean, pretty, pretty neat. Let's go check on the coals. Okay, if you want the coals to last like the maximum amount of time, you can't keep messing with them because this cast of ash that forms, see that? See how thick that ash is on some of these? So this cast of ash, like a charcoal briquette, slows down the burning, moderates the heat, and, and instead of having these super hot spots like the heat has to travel through the ash and I think it kind of, you know, disperses the heat and makes it spread out more. Now, especially down here on the bottom, these are going to burn extra slow. So if you want a fire that's going to last for a really long time, like you're trying to hold coals or something like that, you know, you want to scoot it all up together or even, you know, scoot some of the ash in and bank it up. So let's just take this one, for example, move it out here so you can see it. I'm going to wipe all this ash off. And then what's left under here is just this little uh, piece of stuff there. So, but like this one was further down and, it, and it's um, much more solid. So one last thing, I'm sure some people noticed I was handling these hot coals and uh, it's the same as the basket. If you keep them moving and they don't rest at any one spot for too long. So we used to play uh, catch with hot coals occasionally at the primitive skills gatherings just because it's fun. And the only time I remember anyone having any kind of serious accident was when a coal got caught between his fingers. But someone got, got one, he just kind of wedged in there for a second and burned them. But if you really keep it moving, just, you know, keep your fingers mostly closed and just keep that moving, you know, hand to hand or whatever you have to do. Now, these coals are especially hot. I don't know what it is about these oak bark coals, but they're extremely hot. They're a little more difficult to handle. You just have to really keep them moving. Um, but most coals are much easier to handle and they're, they're not nearly as hot.